for no bloody white fella no more. I'm gonna go up north, I'm gonna find my mother, my aunties, go back home to my country. So you can't hurt me no more. What do you mean, me? I didn't hurt your family. I didn't do anything. You England. I'm not England. I'm Ireland. You bloody England! I'm Ireland! It's a jail gox sasna, that mock mahrakum. We call the Bulgi Arab and we call an Arab Erin Gabrach. You Ireland? Yes, I'm Ireland, you fool. It's moments like these that make me fall in love with the Western genre. Strangers sitting around a campfire sharing stories about the harsh world that they reside in. It's a brief moment of humanity and comfort that the wild often refuses to offer mankind. It is characters from different walks of life realizing that even though we are all different, the traumas we share are very much the same. And even though the movie I'll be talking about today is set in Tasmania, I do believe that Jennifer Kent's The Nightingale is a perfect western. It's also relentlessly cruel and violent. See, at its core, The Nightingale is a revenge story. When going into this film, I thought I was going to get something like Ingmar Bergman's The Virgin Spring, but what I ended up getting was way more in line with Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left. And I think that's a good thing, even though it can be hard to watch at times. All of the music in this review was written and recorded by me. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Now, with that being said, viewer discretion is advised. I freaking hate the English. I'm Ireland. Bloody white people. In the Nightingale, we follow a woman named Claire. It's 1825 and she has lost everything due to the actions of one high-ranking British soldier. We follow her on her quest for vengeance as she tracks him down with the help of a native man she's hired to be her guide. Throughout their journey, they realize that they share somewhat of a common goal. Through trauma, they become a singular unit hell-bent on regaining the little bit of control they once had over their lives. The admiration they gain towards each other throughout the film is simply beautiful and it contrasts so well with the scenes of depravity committed by these British soldiers. These guys are psychopaths, killing, raping, and plundering everything they can. There's a kinetic energy to the violence in this movie that makes you feel every hit, stab, and gunshot wound. These are not fun action sequences. They're not cool in any way. They feel... desperate. I remember this film getting quite criticized during its festival run for its violence, and I feel like all those people that were criticizing the film were so close to getting the point. It is very clearly about the horrors of colonialism, and I honestly think it's important to not sugarcoat that message in any way. In my opinion, too many period pieces do just that. They sugarcoat atrocities committed by mankind. I actually want to go back a little bit to the point I made about The Last House on the Left. It feels fitting that I'm comparing The Nightingale to an exploitation film, because at its core, that's what colonialism is. It's exploitative. But I also feel like some of the discourse around the film has damaged its reputation. The film is not just filled with physical violence, there are lots of other things to take away from it as well. Like for instance, throughout the film Claire has nightmares about the abuse she suffered. In these sequences, Jennifer Kent once again gets to flex her horror muscles like she did in her debut feature film. The nightmare sequences are highly disorienting, with Claire running through the woods while hearing ominous whispering from the trees as the camera movements grow more and more frantic. Shut it up now! But I think what will stick with me the most from this film is the companionship between Claire and her guide, Billy. It gives the film some sort of hope to hold on to. I was actually amazed that a film I had only heard such ugly things about could be so beautiful. If Jennifer Kent keeps making movies half as good as The Nightingale and The Babadook, she is going to be remembered as one of the great directors of our time.